Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of How They Do That. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, a few weeks ago, we had filmmakers Jason McKee and Tomas Guzman on the show discussing their first short film, Lady Luck, case number 37. Well, we got so many follow-up questions and the guys provided so much extra content. Well, we're going to do part two of that show today. One of the things we didn't have time to show you last time were the extensive storyboards that Jason and Tomas made for this film. Every single scene was drawn out with ideas for framing, camera moves, and even lighting. And these are always essential to any filmmaker, so time and resources aren't wasted during the shoot. Well, things don't always go according to plan. Locations are smaller than expected, or maybe you have some shooting restrictions, or you can run into lighting issues, or even have to do 27 takes to get a single shot. Well, on top of all these kinds of things that are going on during a production, you still have to stay true to your vision and tell the story. Well, what we've done is we've put together a collage of some questions and answers showing some of the challenges that Jason and Tomas encountered and how they overcame those issues. So let's get started. There was one shot that we actually did 27 takes of, <laughs> and we're actually using the 27th take. It took uh, like a, around five hours to get the shot, yeah. but that is a shot where, where we just put the camera on sticks and put it on a uh, on a doorway dolly and there you could see the ground right in front and it's I think it's like the, the second shot in the second or third shot in the film and it's a long dolly in and to reveal uh, the lead character and we couldn't put we couldn't lay track for that so we just had mm -hmm. to um, actually it's a pretty complicated shot we had <coughs> we had uh, Tomas um, running the camera and holding the you know holding the 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 sticks and trying to get the exact framing that I was looking for we couldn't we didn't want to show anyone's eyes at first it was just a creative decision and then so the camera's pushing in we've got another guy pushing the uh the doorway dolly as soon as it gets to the end of the shot uh the the guy that's pushing the dolly has to pull the the handle out of the doorway dolly and jump out of frame and then the camera on a certain cue sharply quickly turns back around where we just came from and so well that poses a lot of problems also where do you put the lights you know which was a challenge but I think I think we ended up pulling it off as soon as I nailed it at the end I remember just throwing my fists up going I got it I got it and we'd, yeah. we'd play it back and we were just I mean, we were really ecstatic because we were able to get all the little nuances that we needed to get. We did some, uh, we did a lot of on-set smoke with the lighting, and but we had to eventually pare that down because it was just diffusing the light way too much. In hindsight, I, yeah, I definitely wouldn't use as much smoke um, as we had started out using. There's a ton of uh, little effects in there that hopefully no one really notices our <laughs> effects. One of the effect shots was in the beginning in that long dolly shot. Uh, the camera dollies over or pans over quickly to the cook who's smoking and he blows out smoke out of his mouth. And we did not have permission to smoke in the diner. Um, so, and I, I don't smoke myself, but I had to film smoke coming out of my mouth in the studio and then just comp that over. There's a slow motion shot of the matchbook falling and I sat around for a month waiting to be able to, to get the opportunity to use our red because at that point it was, on a, uh, it was on our first feature that we shot with the red and so I couldn't use it till, it was at, till that was done and we shot it and we shot at uh, what was it 120 frames per second at yeah. 2k and um, it was just, it, we, weren't, it, we weren't getting it how we wanted it. It couldn't go, you know, it couldn't shoot fast enough. So what we ended up doing was just putting some coffee stir sticks in the bottom of the matchbook and then just moving it down through the frame and then I just cut out the, the coffee stir sticks. <music> 
I really thought that I was going to have to explain myself to everyone and why I'm doing certain things. And to me, that's probably the biggest thing I learned is that, you know, at least when you're dealing with a professional crew, they inherently trust you and you don't really, they don't really care necessarily why you're doing the shot you're doing right then. They just want to know that you have the confidence that it will work and that you can be able to tell them as a director what they need to know to be able to do their job to the best that they can do it. I agree with you completely. Uh, uh, that, that shoot was, it was smooth. It was yeah. as smooth as a, a shoot could go. Um, and I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that everyone was there with the intention of just having a good time. Um, you, you know, you, you, take the, you take the money out of the equation and people are there just there to have fun. Um, and that makes all the difference in the world because people are there, they have passion, uh, they got to drive, and so when it comes to just, hey, let's set up a shot, uh, we just do it. And we're all looking at the monitor, and we're all, you know, having a, uh, having a good time. Because that's what this is about. That's what it's about. I mean, we're not looking for Oscars here. We just enjoy telling stories, and yeah. we enjoy shooting stories and sharing that with people. Well, thanks for joining me this week on How'd They Do That. Remember, you can see the full film, Lady Luck, case number 37, at the Adorama Learning Center. And as always, if there's someone you'd like to see on the show, just send a note to askmark at adorama.com, and we just might have them on the show. Well, thanks again for joining me. I'll see you again next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.